So it says this electronic store has eight computers in stock and then gives the prices. So we'll give some summary statistics and then do an analysis of the distribution. Uh oh. Uh, do you have keys to this location? Yeah, I do. So I've entered the data, and here's the histogram, at least the way I have it set up. So <clears throat> when I wrote neat, the implication is to not have weird intervals. When I hit zoom 9, it, I think it was like 181 point something. It was very randomly spread out. I don't remember what it was. but So I've changed mine to starting at 300 up to 800 going by 50s meaning my bin width is 50 and so on here again remember if you hit trace it will take you to where it kind of just snaps to each bar so 450 to 500 is my first that's my first interval with data in it okay I think I'll grab a screenshot of that. How about you guys? What did you set your intervals to be? Or did you just zoom 9 default? Okay. So go ahead and look on yours. If you do zoom 9 and it sets it for you, what is it setting the X scale at? So go to window and hit X scale. What does it say? What was it? 75. Okay. okay. Um, I, I do remember when I had 181, it was because I had an error in my data. I had a 50 instead of the last 500. So I fixed it. So again, this is 450 to 5, 550, etc. 6, 650. So this would be 700 to 750. And then 800. All right, so either one, you can look at mine or yours. Let's grab the summary statistics real quick. So stat, calc, and so our, our X bar or our mean is 637.5. And this is money, so it's good to analyze it in context. So 637.50, standard deviation for this data for the pop for the sample, I mean, $123.20. Alright. So let's go into the socks analysis. If you don't remember what those are, go ahead and grab your orange notes. And it was the last thing that we wrote yesterday. <clears throat> so first thing to identify is the shape or what kind of distribution do we have? And we talked about skewed left, skewed right, or normal. And this one's a little hard to decide. At least it could be, right? So what do you guys think? You seem like you're going to say. Okay, you're saying skewed more left. And I can kind of see that, like, if we, if we shape a line over our bars, it definitely looks skewed to the left in that case, for sure. Um, those of you here are using Zoom 9, I guess since I have this, I can go do that. Zoom 9. So that's what it looks like when you Zoom 9 it, and it's got those 75 or so width bars. Still think it looks skewed left? It's hard, right? It's hard with only three bars, for sure. Um, I don't think... Let's see if this changes anything. I'm going to go 400. I didn't try this before. What if we go by 25? So that might... Yeah. We get more bars, but it's still hard to analyze the skew. This is a weird one. Because we have this big gap in the middle. But that's informative itself. Okay? So, shape, debatable. Mine kind of shows a skew to the left. Other versions, like that one, it's almost normal with stuff on both sides, right? Okay. 
And then outliers, do we have any? Did anybody do an actual check for outliers? You did? Okay, so our I, IQR, let's do our IQR is Q3 minus Q1. What is Q3? Can someone look so I don't have to flash back and forth? What was it? And Q1. Right, so we have 225 as an IQR. Uh, just comparing the interquartile range with our standard deviation, just to take note of it. Okay, so then our upper bound for outliers. Let's let me write outliers here. Our upper bound is going to be 725 plus 225 times 1.5. So that's that little check calculation that we wrote yesterday. So it's 725 plus parentheses, 225 times 1.5. And that's 1,000. So do we have any outliers on the upper end? Nope. And then lower is 500 minus the same thing, not 2.25. So I'm guessing we probably don't have any lower ones either. One sixty-two fifty. All right. Well, at least we know where our outliers should be. So none in this case. Center. So we've done SO, now we're at C for center. In this distribution, which should we use? Should we use mean and standard deviation to analyze center, or should we use median and IQR? What do you guys think? Okay, so if we're seeing a skew, we should go median and IQR. And if we're thinking of it as more normal, so if we're thinking of that kind of normal, then more of the mean and standard deviation. Guys, I'm having a hard time deciding myself. So if you are, that's okay. And then lastly, the spread. Uh, we kind of talked about that just now by saying IQR or standard deviation. Tell you what, let's make a box plot and see if that can help us at all. So just switch your data plot to a box plot. And we already know we don't have outliers, so we can use the second one. Something about that helps me see it more like skewed left. You guys agree? Okay. Uh, just for compare, so, and the reason I'm saying that is because this is kind of clustered together here more than that's spread out to the left. Um, on the summary statistics, I wish I had copied that, that's okay. So our mean was 637, and this can help sometimes. Yeah, so look. Our median was 700. Let me go write that. Uh, median equals 700. So this is another way that you can help yourself figure out if it's skewed. You see our mean is, in this case, about $60 less than our median. So think about median and then mean is shifted over. Now I'm just ballparking the drawing, but that matches with the left skew. Do you remember that? Uh, in your notes, we wrote mean is less than median for the left skew. Okay, now, <clears throat> it, when we wrote normal, we said that mean and median are approximately the same. How approximately is approximately? Like, is 40 or is $60? Pretty close to the same, or is it less? Like, it depends on the circumstance. In this case, 
sixty dollars is a, about ten percent of of either. It's not quite, but pretty close. So, yeah, this is. I, I'm more confident saying this is a left skew. Not just based on the appearance, but based on these numbers as well. So again, going back to what Cynthia said, we would want to use. Let me write left skew first. Left skew mean it's less than median, significantly, all right, I'll just say significant. So that tells us to use the median and IQR for reporting. So let's say this is Best Buy. What would they tell someone calls, hey, do you have any computers in stock? And how much are they? And the person would probably say on average, not median. So a smart store owner would give them the median and say the median price is $700. And why is that better than saying the mean price is $637.50? So a customer comes to the store, what's going to happen? Say that again? Potentially. Yeah, because think of how many of our data points are above the mean. One, two, three, four, five out of the eight. So 62.5% of our data is above that price, right? So you would be steering that customer kind of inaccurately if you told them the mean. Guys, that's a pretty thorough analysis of this. How did you do in yours? Did you get that far down into the weeds? Okay, today's practice will have you doing some of that, so I do want you thinking deeply. Remember this, what we just talked through is really where this needs to go. So let's try it out one more data set, and before we do that, I have some questions. So you can set your stuff down, because these are just thinking and kind of analysis questions without having to do all the data. <clears throat> I'll show you the first one, just so you know where I'm going with this. So is the following variable likely to have a normal distribution or a skewed distribution? So th that's going to be the question for about five different slides. So I'll present some kind of a situation, and I want you to think through, should the data be normally distributed or probably not normally distributed? Make sense? So don't shout anything out. I'll just give you a second to think, and then I'll ask you to all chime in. So first one, the heights of all the people in a large group. So let's call the large group our school. Do you think that's normally distributed or skewed one way or the other? That's the question. So take a second to think. Remember, a normal distribution looks like this. Roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect, but roughly where it clusters in the middle and tails off both ends. So is height of people normally distributed? Okay, what do you guys think? Yes or no? If skewed, which way? You think skewed, which way? Skewed, like, if it's, if it's skewed this way, it would be skewed towards shorter people, right? If it's skewed that way, it would be skewed towards taller people. And then, of course, normal would be kind of like clumping in the middle. What do you think, Mia? Um, I think a left skew, so clumping towards short people. Yeah, I can't see that well, but I'm pretty sure. Now, there's nothing to see. It's just a question. Do you think people at our school cluster more towards the left, so it would be skewed right. <clears throat> so you think there's more short people here? Okay. Any other thoughts? Only these guys have talked. What do you think? Normal. Normal. Okay. Now this data isn't for our school, but here's a graph showing the height. What would you call that? That's pretty normal, even though we have some maybe surprisingly high bars here and here. 
like 75 is 6, 3. <clears throat> and then, I don't know what that goes out to, but like 6, 8 maybe. We have some tall people in this particular set, but overall, it's normal. Okay? Don't you think people kind of cluster around like 5, 10? This would be, if we highlight that region from like 5, 6 to 6, 1 or so. Most people are about that tall, right? Yes, we have shorter people, but most people, 5'6 to 6'1 or so. All right. So think of a spinner. Maybe you're playing a game and it has eight sections. Just numbered maybe 1 to 8. And you spin the spinner. And we, let's say we spin it 100 times. What? Actually, let's do easy. 80 times. How many times would you expect each number to get landed on? If we'd spun it 80 times. You guys know spinner probabilities? How many times would each one be expected to hit? You guys, there's eight sections on a pair spinner. They're all the same size. So 10 each, right? So think of a histogram with 10 for each bar. Is that normally distributed? Or not? Can I draw something like this over it? <clears throat> like that? Or is it not so much like that? What do you think? Well, here's a trial of spins. For some reason, we landed on 7 the most, but and 3 the least, but still all of them have some. So is that a normal distribution? Would you call that normal? It's not. Why not? Well, there's no tail to it, right? Like, I can't... If I draw some line to kind of capture this, it's more like a rectangle. It definitely doesn't look like largest in the middle tailing off at both ends, does it? So definitely not normal, not a normal distribution. All right, another one. Scores on an easy test. So let's think about if I gave your class a fraction. No, not fraction. A multiplication facts test. Maybe two problems with fractions. Is that normal or skewed? <clears throat> hmm? Which way? Which way would the skew be? Think about where the high bars would be and the low bars would be on an easy test. Okay? Skewed, I agree. Which way is this skewed? That's a left skew, right? Remember, ski off the skew, not off the cliff. So in a left skew, where is the median? Is it further right or further left? Left skew, where is the median? So the median would be there, and then the mean, these low scores down here would pull that mean down, so the mean would probably be somewhere in here, left of the median, or lower than, right? Remember in your notes, left skew, mean is less than the median. Good. Number of children in a family, is that normal or skewed? Mia, are you with me on this? Number of children, let's, we don't know necessarily worldwide, but it's probably similar to America. What do you think? I'm going to ask you. Normal or skewed? No. 
Noah? Guys, how many kids do people typically have? Two. All right, so I've heard one to three, I've heard two, but how many kids do they typically not have? Anything out to the right. So can you visualize that this is definitely going to be skewed to the right? Right? There's an argument to be made that zero should not be on here because we're talking about children, but... You know, even if we take off this bar, it's still heavily skewed to the right. Why? And it's because of what you guys said. Most people have like one to three kids. Probably worldwide, that would definitely be true. So, and then the higher numbers definitely tail off. So, skewed right. Really develop that, that core understanding of what skew means. That's what we're doing right now, right? So, good job. Um, the median number of kids would probably be somewhere in here. And the mean, because of this 10, because of any higher bars, you guys probably can't see, but there is a little bit of blue color right here at the 10. But any of those higher ones is going to pull that mean up to where you, you might say the average number of kids in the family is like 4 or something, but... Because, you know, there's those people... I went to this conference in high school with a girl that had... It was like 20 kids in her family. And, you know, those kind of people pull the average way up. But normally, it's the median. So if you're going to report this to... Let's say, write it in the Daily Sentinel to Grand Junction. Would you use the mean or the median to report... Definitely you'd want to go with the median because it more closely reflects the real situation. How many, does anybody have a lot of brothers and sisters in here? You do? How many? I have six. Six siblings? So there are seven of you? Okay. You have, so there's five. Okay. My brother has five kids. Five, seven. Seven. Five brothers, two sisters. So there's eight of you. Yeah. Okay. Well... If it was just our class, it would probably be, it would definitely shift to the right a little. All right, a couple more. How about weight? Normal, skewed, what do you think? Think about what we said about height, first of all. What was it? It was normal. So what do you think about weight? It just says in a population, so we don't know where we're looking. But what do you think? Huh? I would say probably normal, because weight usually follows height, at least to a degree. Um, if you went subpopulations, you might have a skew one way or the other, like sub-Saharan Africa or some of those really poor places. Which way would it skew? Probably. So, yeah. If you're in like a poverty-stricken country, it might skew to the right. So, something like that. Where a lot of people are underweight. And then there's other places where it might be skewed the other way. Okay, how about scores on a difficult test? If I gave you guys your chapter 3 polynomials test again right now. How would that, how would the scores look? Normal, skewed, what do you think? Skewed. skewed which way? It would look like this probably, right? If we kind of did like scores 50, 60, 70, 80, etc. We might have a lot of them huddling down by the lower numbers. All right, you guys get the idea. Let's do a little shorter one. Okay, let's do one. So you can access that data either up here or on Google Classroom. I'll, I'll leave it up here, but let's do, I want a complete socks analysis for pull socks for our class. Okay, right there.
And I have a feeling you're going to find this a pretty, um, I don't know, boring graph, maybe? I don't know. Let's see how you do with it, though. Yeah. Yeah, I'll zoom in. Is that good? Yeah. Although I said a boring graph, but there's ways to make it more informative. So I want you to play around with your bandwidth so that the data is more, a little bit more relatable. Oh. Okay. So our intervals, like down. Yours right now are looking like they're going by one. So that's a, it's how wide those intervals are on the bottom. I would like you to play around to where you get more like six, maybe five or six bars to see a really good shape. Yeah. I'll too. How to change that? Is it hard on you? It's a lot of... It's a lot of what? It's a lot of like... It's just like on the two like videos and on the stuff, it's like different numbers. They're like press 5, but it's actually two. Oh, is it a different version of calculator? I don't know, it's kind of weird. Yeah. They still have some at the budget office, yeah. which is just down the hall from the main office. Hopefully they still have some. Well, it's either interval width or bin width. On these calculators, it's X scale on the graphing feature.
So how many of you wrote out your analysis? I do want you to do that, like your SOCS analysis. So I have the data entered into the histogram and I changed it. <clears throat> this one is at a 0.25 bin width. So it would be like, so let me go to window and show you. I have it starting at 96, so it would go 96 to 96.25 and then to 96.5, 0.75. And so if, I just want to run you through real quick. Do you think that graph is very useful? I agree. Like we have all these empty bins in between our bars, so it makes it hard to analyze. So if I bump this up, so X scale under the window key, so I bump it to 0.5, it's better. We still have some empty bins, which it's not the end of the world, but sometimes that makes it harder to see. <clears throat> okay, here's the other extreme. If you did like by twos, we have two bins, and of course that's not going to be very informative either, right? It's all the, all the data is clumped together too much. So you could try one, and then there's your data if you go by one. So that's pretty good, right? No empty bins. We have four bars or four full intervals that... I think, I don't remember what the count was. It was like 14 or 15, so that seems good. What do you think? So is this normal? Is it skewed? Did anybody look at your statistics? Huh? Let's go look at a statistic report so that we know if the median and mean are... And they're going to be pretty close in this because the data was just not very spread out. So our median, sorry, our mean is 96.5%, 96.5, and our median was 97.5. So our mean was lower. Is 1% significant? Like we wrote in our notes, and I'm going to keep going back to this, sorry, not there. Right here, if it's normal, the mean is approximately the same as the median. So we're, at, we're only off by 1, 1%, but is 1% a lot or a little in this case? I mean, our whole range is only a couple percent, right? Like if you look at our highest and lowest data value, our highest is 99 and our lowest is 96. So it's only 3% from minimum to maximum. So 1% is 33% of that, right? It's a full third of our range. So yeah, that's significant. So our median being higher tells us that this is probably skewed which way? Median is higher, mean is lower. Tells us what? Skewed. Guys, read your notes, please. Like, don't just guess. That's why we write stuff down. It's skewed to the left. I'm not sure it looks that way. I suppose if we ignore this bar, then yes, it tails off kind of down this way. Sort of. Okay. What would you use to report our class average or our class cent measure of center, would it be the median or the mean? Median probably, and our median value is 97.5%, so we're a healthy bunch in general. All right, so I'm gonna be working on some problems on, on a paper that's, it's not gonna be all this for every problem, but it will be some. So make sure that you're 